to game number one. I am Magic, the Age of Mythology Legends versus the Viper here. Game number one, coming in on Arabia. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the quarterfinals of EGC Winter Championship. On Arabia, we'll have the Viper playing as the English on the left side in blue. And on the right side is going to be I am Magic, the Age of Mythology player in red playing as the English as well. Viper opening with an extra scout over his opponent who does not. So Viper is going to have the upper hand when it comes to gathering the sheep at the beginning of the game. Yep, potentially going to be advantage for him. Um, we'll have to see if he stumbles across the sheep. Um, but yeah, I am Magic currently sending a scout to the back side of the map, which is not going to increase his chances for finding those large groups of three sheep, uh, especially with these uh, with these two scouts, as you've mentioned. Looks like indeed I am Magic is going to play one scout for a time being. Given the fact that neither of these civilizations are traditional professional scout civilizations, you are likely going to be relying on those sheep for quite a long time. So having a couple extra sheep over your opponent is definitely something that can give you a nice edge. So far it looks like both players have one scout being trailed by uh, two sheep. And Viper's second scout is not being followed by any up until now. He's going to pick up three on the right side if all goes well for him. So he's going to have a slight edge indeed when it comes to gathering sheep. But of course this also means that uh, his villager count will be one less compared to his opponent. And Viper also housed for a brief moment over here. Just now finishing that house. I am magic. His sheep carcasses are placed weirdly because currently his villagers are sort of inside that town center gathering. Yeah, and that's a pretty pretty efficient placement for those villagers, gotta say. Uh, they're not gonna have any walking time at all on those sheep, so uh, that's pretty uh, pretty good placement for him. And uh, now starting to build that uh, lumber camp. And, um, yeah, both players just approaching the age up here. Nothing out of the ordinary so far, really. Going to be expecting that council hall pretty soon from both players. And, uh, yeah, you can really see if you look at... Um, well, I guess I Magic did actually end up producing a second scout. But, uh, let's see. Just looking at the scouts, where's Viper's second scout? Viper got quite a few more sheep by the looks of things, just having that scout a little bit earlier. Indeed, that is a massive advantage over here for him. On the other side, you already have Lumber Camp up for I uh, Magic for Viper. No Lumber Camps just yet. Both players getting close to Feudal Age. As expected, I Am uh, Magic having one extra villager over Viper is going to click up a tiny bit faster. It's going to place the Council Hall all the way back over here. That's going to help reinforce that gold mine. But it also means that there is a bit more walking distance between him and the Viper as compared to placing it like right next to that stone mine and the Lumber Checks, for example. Yep, interesting. Only uh, two villagers on the landmark for I Am Magic, so he's not too concerned about his uh, his age up time here. And that's uh, probably because even if he ages a little bit later, and uh, sorry, my cat is destroying my desk. One sec. <laughs> oh boy. Cats and uh, keyboard peripherals, it's always a nasty combination, so I'm going to take over while you're going to Take that fight against your cat here. As you said, I'm Magic. <laughs> Only two villagers on that council hall, which is a little surprising. Viper is building it with four. And you asked me this question before, if it's possible to see either of these players going for uh, horsemen, potentially the newly buffed horsemen in the January patch. And if you're not that much worried about the council hall's timing, that could be a sign that you're going for some horsemen at some point, because you will be behind in terms of archer numbers, no matter what, since your opponent has the council hole up so much faster. Yeah, uh, at the same time, like, if uh, if Viper does uh, end up sending longbows straight across the map, like, the moment he ages, like, yes, he's going to be up a lot sooner, but uh, at the same time, like, Magic does have the, re like, the defender's advantage with the reinforcement time and stuff like that, and so he probably would be just fine. But it looks like maybe part of the reason he's doing that is because he's recognized, like, how far behind in sheep he is, and he's going to need these farms. So he's actually uh, dropped down about five farms just to make sure that uh, he's got enough food income and doesn't hit any roadblocks with that. Uh, and so the extra resources he gets from not putting all those villagers on the, the landmark are going to help him pay for that. And given the fact that, indeed, um, he has to play with a lot of farms, he doesn't really have any other reliable source of food, he's probably going to be behind the military numbers as well, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him dropping a couple of defensive towers 
probably one to the left of the wood line and one to the right of the farms would be very helpful. Because just a couple of defensive towers would help so much slowing down Viper's aggression. Because archers won't really be able to do much against those towers at the beginning. So that could help immensely for our magic, making sure that his eco is safe for the time being. Yeah, at the same time, if you invest into towers after you just built five farms, you're not likely going to be able to get out many longbows. Uh, if you look at his resources, like he's already struggling to produce just a couple of longbows. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's definitely going to be in a bit of trouble here as uh, Viper's got quite a few longbows on the way across the map. He's got his scout in the back of uh, Magic's base trying to uh, spot where those, uh, where those villagers are going to be uh, most exposed and uh, looking to pressure those. Gotta say that it's one of the best analysis in Age of Empires 4 when you can hear a cat meowing at the background. <laughs> Hang on, leave me a second, I'll, let me sort him out. <laughs> no worries, no worries. It's actually kind of calming. It's a call before the storm here, uh, before the battle breaks out between uh, Magic and Viper. Looks like for now, Viper's gonna have a window to hit those Lumberjacks and maybe even the Farmers. I'm uh, Magic retreating and since English are a great defensive civilization with a network of castles bonus, Viper is going to be repelled for the time being. On the left side, Viper is probing around with three longbows. On the right side, he's doing the same thing. So you see, he's splitting up his forces, trying to get some damage done on the villagers. Because at this point, as he loses one scout on the left side, the core concept for him is that his eco is completely untouched, whereas the opponent's one isn't. And there's the first villager casualty of the game. Viper harassing from two directions, gets one kill. Yeah, that's a very nice pick for him. And uh, just going to back on out of there with the longbows for now. Wait until he has a couple more. Um, and yeah, we'll see what the what the adaptation is from him. I Magic's going to be um, out of sheep in the next couple minutes here. He has just three villagers gathering those sheep underneath his TC, but whereas he only has two left, and, uh, well, Viper has, looks like eight sheep under his TC, so, um, yeah, going to be um, a bit difficult for him as he's going to have to add in even more farms, adding in two more right now, and that's just going to slow down his military mass even more. And Viper, instead of adding farms, is going to move out for the hunt. Of course, once all the hunt and sheep are depleted, Viper is going to have to make a big investment into farms. But the whole concept over here is that you are trying to delay your farm transition as much as possible. Because you want to make sure that your opponent has to invest resources into their farms before you do. And you utilize those extra resources you save up this way to finish off your opponent. So as things stand, by Viper having all this hunt on the left side... It's going to allow him to delay his farm transition as much as possible. And if he maintains such a level of map control, it's possible we're even going to see boars being taken down or additional berry patches being taken by Viper because simply he wants to delay that farm transition as much as possible. Yeah, definitely. The more he delays that, the more military units he's going to have and the more pressure he can put on. And just, just by having the... Not having to make those farms, he's already going to make it pretty much impossible for Magic to go to his hunt safely. Um, so, in a weird way, by not making farms, he's a he's forcing his opponent to make farms. Indeed, that is actually a good point, indeed. Now, of course, there is some positives here for Magic when it comes to that farming eco, and that is that it's a little more effective than just gathering from berries slash sheep mm -hmm. here. So, despite the fact that, of course, you have to invest into those... In, for I am Magic, he can basically have a similar food eco with 10 villagers compared to Viper having 13. So you sort of save three villagers worth of time and you can allocate them elsewhere like gold or wood. So there's definitely some positives in adding these farms. And especially once you get to Castle Age, it's going to be even more effective because the farm getter rate will increase even further for the English upon reaching Castle Age. But for now, of course, I think Viper is happy with the fact that he doesn't have to build a single farm. Yep, that's true. That farm investment will definitely uh, start to pay off over time. Just in the short term, it's not an investment that you usually want to make. But it uh, looks like so far, um, Magic's doing pretty well in the longbow count. Uh, not looking uh, not looking too bad. Uh, pretty similar to Vipers. And um, yeah, for now, both players are just uh, content to mass up a little bit. Starting to get their blacksmith upgrades. No other military buildings from either of them just yet. Viper has gotten the double Brodax upgrade, not something that I Am Magic has had. 
And it looks like Viper is going to realize that Iron Magic was moving all the way to the left side. He probably wanted to flank around and try to hit Viper from the side. But Viper spotting that with that scout will mean that he knows that Iron Magic is not back at home. So there's a chance to pick off a couple of bills. Iron Magic rushing back home to try and push off those longbows before they get villager kills. And I think he should be able to. A tower here to defend the Lumberjacks would be so, so good because it would also expand your network of castles bonus for our magic. Yeah, that would be pretty good. He doesn't have a lot of villagers on wood to afford it at the moment, but anyway, some uh, skirmishing coming in here. Looks like a slight advantage for uh, for Viper in some of these trades, but there are more longbows here for uh, magic, I believe. And of course, he's going to have network of castles bonus in here. Um, Blacksmith upgrades are coming in for both sides, so if you look at it, we have the defense upgrade in for Viper, same thing for our magic, but our magic doesn't have the attack upgrade yet, he still has 6 base attack as opposed to 7, so there's a slight advantage there for Viper, on the other hand, our magic is going to have a slightly easier time reinforcing his army because his production building is right over here, and that attack upgrade is just now coming in, Viper... Running out of sheep underneath his town center, so he's soon going to have to switch to different form of food income. And berries, they won't be super, super effective. So the fact that Iron Magic has already invested into this much farming geek was actually going to start paying off. Because if you look at that food income, now it's consistently better than Viper's one. Yep, that's definitely true. The farms are definitely starting to pay off. Um, that uh, longbow count is... Uh, pretty healthy for, for Magic overall, and um, yeah, one of these players is going to have to try and, uh, to change up uh, how this is being played, or at least um, maybe consider, like, do they just try and take a risk and sneak around the side and, like, pick off some more villagers, or do they try and mix in a stable, or we they don't really have uh, any differing game plans yet. It's all pretty similar so far. However, I guess Magic is actually trying to sneak in an age up, and Viper is actually not uh, not too far behind him by the looks of things. Yep, Magic's food eco is so so good that uh, he could have gotten up to Castle Age three minutes ago. It's just the fact that he didn't have the gold for it. Like his eco was so unbalanced, he wasn't expecting his food eco to be that good. I assume, and that is something that buys time for Viper to catch up, despite the fact that Viper's food eco was way weaker. If Magic had a market, that would work out as well as Viper moves in with the longbows. Might actually get one or two villager kills, but it looks like instead the house and the lumber camps are targeted. So no harm done here by Viper's forces. But as you said, I'm Magic getting ready to go up. And now your next decision point is going to be whether or not you go up with the White Tower or the King's Palace. In this matchup, you probably prefer the King's Palace simply because uh, having that extra town center over your opponent could be a massive advantage. And indeed, there it goes for I'm Magic. Castle H is on the way, whereas for Viper, he's pushing up his uh, villagers with now towers, so he's going to have the network of castles expanded all the way to the front here. Yeah, and that's definitely going to help him uh, maintain a position uh, just outside the base here. But yeah, it's pretty hard for him to push in and do a lot of damage here. He has to somehow get a uh, line of sight on those uh, villagers on the, the wood line, which can be tricky to do. Another tower being uh, pushed forward uh, by Vipers can just give him some more uh, room to push forward and breathe. Maybe garrison some units in there if they get low HP, stuff like that. I am Magic. And, uh, oh yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, uh, I was just gonna <laughs> say, uh, I am Magic is gonna get this uh, King's Palace up a little bit earlier, so he's gonna be able to um, get out a couple more villagers from that than, than Viper will be, who's about to place his, his landmark. But Viper's up three villagers, so at the end of the day, they're probably going to be like mostly uh, equal at the end once Viper reaches Castle Age himself. Viper isn't messing around. He knows that he needs to get to Castle Age fast. He's rushing up with 17 vills. Also tempted to dive in before the opponent gets the upgrades. He knows exactly that this is the chance to pick off a couple of vills as the early Man at Arms upgrade comes in for our magic. In this matchup of full longbows, even just a handful of men at arms could be just a massive power spike. And that's exactly what we're seeing from our magic. He's adding more and more men at arms. Market also coming in here for him, so his eco is slightly unbalanced. But the veteran longbow is now in. And he's probably going to start picking up those upgrades as well. As I said, Viper has a small eco lead. That, that's because Viper managed to pick off some veils before. And I'm Magic also mm -hmm. had to make some new scouts to just keep track of the opponent's army. Viper, despite the fact that he clicked up a lot fa later, he's going to reach Castle Age at a reasonable time. 
We'll lose one villager here to the longbows, though. We'll lose a second one. So the four reveals at least get picked off by our magic. So there is definitely something to be happy about here for him. Yeah, and, and you mentioned that uh, magic has dropped that barracks and he's starting to go for uh, the man-at-arms. But uh, Viper has actually chosen to go for a stable. And I think that's a, a smart decision because... Uh, you don't have to in near invest in nearly as many upgrades uh, for knights as you do for men at arms as English. And if if you're expecting your opponent to um, to make men at arms or mangonels or anything like that, like the knights are going to be good into pretty much anything magic can do in this situation. And the knights could also help a lot against siege in the future because one of the weaknesses mm -hmm. that you're going to have with the men at arms play here is that you are still very much exposed to mangonels aggression and. Given the fact that Viper's got forward towers over here, I would love to see a forward siege workshop being dropped even, so he can start pushing this with Mangonels. Meanwhile, we're going to have a defensive tower coming in here for magic. Viper's gonna try to pick off the villagers nearby. He gets uh, no villager kills. He was targeting the tower instead of the veils behind. Not necessarily the best fight ever here for Viper. He's got numbers advantage, but uh, he actually looks like he's going to be happy with that fight. Men at arms still not having the castle age upgrade and the defense upgrades. He's not going to be able to survive long enough for those Castle Age longbows. Still, it looks like Viper trying to focus on the villagers, oftentimes seemingly clicking the tower instead. Will mean that a lot of longbows will go down from him. But now Magic is losing significant numbers too. And as you said... Yeah, at the, sorry, at the same time, there's also a raid going on in the North Wood line. Oh, uh, boy. Viper has one knight killing a lot of villagers there, and Magic has not noticed. So Viper is like totally okay with taking that trade. It's both good for him in terms of longbows and he's killed so many villagers already i have not noticed this and neither did i am magic because there was just so much fighting going on down south he wanted to force that tower up so much but he's still not noticing this and now that's an alarming amount of villagers killed he still hasn't noticed like this could be a game losing 20 30 40 seconds here because the amount of villagers getting killed over there is starting to get ridiculous yeah, that knight has killed, I think, like 11 or 12 villagers almost, and continuing to grow, and he, he's yet to notice. He's got to he's gotta be noticing soon. There we go. He's pulling the villagers off, but he's down to 38 villagers, and Viper is at 49. And with both players playing with the King's Palace, there is no way for uh, Magic to cut into that deficit. He has this farming eco set up, which is definitely a positive, because this is something that Viper is uh, just now establishing. But given the fact that the eco lead is now massive for Viper, this is a very difficult situation to be in for our magic. And as you said, the knights will be a great choice here for Viper. He can get quite a few of them on the battlefield easily. He doesn't need a lot of upgrades for them. And he's also going to have the mobility factor going for him. On the left side, our magic is going to have the Vos up. But really, if Viper starts mixing in some siege weapons, which he does, things could get really difficult for uh, I am magic. Oh, this one knight is just winning the game. <laughs> it's killed another villager on the back. Uh, probably about to get uh, a second one. Um, it's just on the yeah right side of the base there. Yeah, that one knight is just doing so much work. And there were some knights sent to the left side as well. So he's not the only one doing work here. But as you see, Viper, if he sees there is any kind of enemy reaction, he's just going to jump into those towers. And you see that when the Manitarms don't have a ton of upgrades on them, the longbows will work quite nicely against them. Although... Those guys already have 8 pierce armor, so it's even clad armor, but I guess the mass of those longbows are so big that even though each of them does 1 damage, they still do like 30 combined. Yeah, they're actually doing doing uh, 2 damage each. They have 10 damage against the uh, the armor. If these were regular archers, they would only Ooh. have they would only have 9, so that's definitely one advantage you have with the longbow is in this specific situation, it is actually doing twice as much damage than normal archer. And that's a big difference maker because you can also retreat quite effectively here. Textile's coming in as well for Viper, so he's going to make sure that he isn't going to get raided by his opponent as easily as his opponent could be. Viper also thinking about some additional towers to expand his network of castles bonus. And we're seeing more and more knights hit the field. Siege Workshop also finishing up with the Grease Old Axles upgrade. Not a single siege weapon out there yet, but Viper loves to pick this upgrade up to increase the movement speed of his siege weapons. Yep, it's a very strong upgrade for sure. And uh, yeah, as soon as he's done that, he's got a mangonel in queue. And as soon as the mangonels are out, it's going to be very difficult for uh, Magic to defend here. As he doesn't have a siege workshop or any cavalry of himself, have his own. Indeed. If you look at the resource income permit, I am Magic's food eco is still light years ahead compared to Viper's one. This is just how powerful those farmers are and how powerful I am Magic's food eco is. The problem is that he lost way too many villagers.
I think if he didn't lose those like 15 villagers on that food line, he would still be in a very competitive position right now. It's only a 10 villagers gap now though, so it looks like Viper wasn't producing villagers consistently. Uh, Magic able to cut into the deficit a tiny bit. What with Manganos coming in, and as you said, Longbow's doing two damage per hit on those mana arms, they actually perform quite well. And on the other side, Viper's Knights also have six ranged armor, so Longbows do four damage per hit on them, but of course they have way more HP than the Man at Arms do. Mm -hmm. And of course they're also way more mobile, they can escape from uh, situations a little bit more easily, engage in situations a little bit more easily, and yeah, this is just looking really good for Viper, he's getting towers up all around the base to make sure he's got that network of castles coverage everywhere, uh, make sure he's got that vision of everything I Am Magic is doing, and uh, yeah, with the with the mangonels rolling, it's uh, it's looking bad. Mangonel is indeed on the way. No response from Iron Magic yet. He has full infantry as his army, and even with the staggered formation, it's difficult to hold off mangonels, knights, and the longbows pushing in right now. The only thing that's really missing for Viper is a couple of battering grounds, but he doesn't have the siege upgrade just yet. But the mangonel crawling up, it looks like Viper is just going for the kill on the eco. He doesn't even get bothered about the buildings at this point. Yep, just walk onto those farms. He knows he's got a superior military advantage at this point. He has to know he killed a ton of villagers. And uh, he can just potentially go sit in the back of the base here, although he's opting to stand on top of his mangonel for now, just to make sure he, that doesn't uh, doesn't get lost to anything. And um, yeah, this is uh, this is tough for Magic. He's trying to go for a counterattack to try and make something happen. Um, but there's not too much for him to hit right now. Exactly. Like, those longbows could maybe do some damage, but it's by far not going to be able to compensate for the losses that he suffers from. So at this point, Viper should be able to repel this attack without any major problems. The knights will be a good response to both the men-at-arms and the longbows. Whereas on the other side, there's just no response from Iron Magic to the army inside his base. And despite the fact that those farming places were placed conveniently sheltered by the town centers, now that Viper is deep into the base of our magic our magic is gonna have a tough time holding on to that farming eco yeah for sure even more villagers going down and the knights now at home for viper finally uh being able to defend there's probably enough units here that this isn't quite enough knights yet but with the reinforcement time and uh everything uh it looks like it's gonna be a pretty uh good fight for viper at the end of the day yeah viper is slowly cleaning this one up Whereas on the other side, the problem for our magic is that he's very far from cleaning this up. In fact, he's nowhere. So, slowly but surely, Viper is grinding down those men at arms and the longbows in the middle of the map, despite losing a couple of villagers on that wood line. But ultimately, at least he's able to clean that up. Whereas on the other side, I am magic is still unable to access a lot of farms because there is 50 longbows inside his base, supported by one mangano. And in the middle, his army is slowly getting cleaned up. He got pretty decent value for those, but... His eco is now collapsing, he's at 49 villagers as opposed to 68, and Viper's at 63 army as opposed to only 13 from I Am Magic. Yep, it's looking to be a victory for Viper, yeah, there we go, I Am Magic taps out, and yeah, as you said, like, if, if not for that one raid, uh, like, I Am Magic was probably in a pretty decent position in the game, um, but yeah, unfortunately, just didn't notice for a little bit too long and lost quite a few bills. And that is a ton of villagers lost over here. Let's take a look at the villager graph. He started from like 55 and he went all the way down to something like 40. Some of that didn't come from that night. There were some villagers taken down as well down south. But there is like a legitimate 8, 10, 12 villagers killed by that night. And from that point to... And as things stand... Oh, the game is already going on for some time. Okay, so we get to jump right into it. Um, we might need to speed forward because apparently they were super fast setting up the game or they forgot to uh, set spectator delay. That's the alternative. With that being said, we're jumping into game number two over here. Welcome to Hillandale. This is the home map of uh, I Am Magic. On the right side, we're going to have the Viper playing as the blue Chinese. And on the left side, we will have I Am Magic playing as the red HRE. Yeah, and already um, an interesting deviation from what we've seen a lot of today is uh, neither player is actually going for a uh, second scout this time around. Maybe because they already have a hunt uh, inside their base, they don't really need to uh, worry too much about the sheep uh, compared to other maps. Um, 
But uh, yeah, that's going to leave both uh, players with one extra villager that they normally wouldn't have. But uh, overall, I mean, not a big difference. Looking at the base of uh, I Am Magic Royal quickly, we will have a front gold mine over here. His big gold is also up front over here. Uh, it's overlooking this Dale area. There is one entrance on the front, and it's partially blocked by a stone mine. That's definitely not something that helps. On the left side, it's even more worrisome. There are some berries that spawn in a way that it's going to make it difficult to wall this off. In particular, stone wall this. So you might need to pick those berries before you can stone wall this. Up north, it should be a rather easy wall for our magic. Down south for Viper, he's got the berries spawning also on that area where he is planning to place walls. On the north, it's an easy walling, and in the middle, Viper's also got an easy wall going. Relic distribution seems to be in the favor of Viper, though, quite a bit, I'm not gonna lie. One, two, three, four relics closer to him than they are to the opponent. Yeah, that's true. They do seem quite close to his base. Uh, if he gets the Castle Age a little bit earlier, that's gonna be... Uh, definitely a little bit easier for him to grab those than it is uh, for Magic. Also a little bit easier for him to defend them if he has any military units. Um, but uh, Magic now clicking up to the next age, it is going to be the Aachen Chapel. Uh, going to be getting it onto, looks like, pretty much all of his resources. He's going to cover the, the hunt, the sheep, the wood, and his gold, and his stone for the future. So a pretty good uh, Aachen Chapel placement for sure. On the other side, we have the Barbican of the Sun coming in here by Viper in front of his base, protecting that big gold mine. I am Magic trying to harass those villagers. This will also tell him that his opponent is going up at the Barbican of the Sun, so he knows that it is not the Imperial Academy that his opponent is going for, at least for the time being, because with the Chinese on this map, most of the time you are seeing some sort of 2000 Center Song Dynasty boom. Although you have to be careful, because if you just go blindly for like a 2TC Song Dynasty boom, you could get surprised. That applies to every civilization on this map. You can't just blindly assume that your opponent is also going to boom like you do, because you could easily get surprised by an early attacking Castle Age. Yeah, for sure. Um... Looks like uh, Viper is not actually going to put any villagers on his gold mine. Um, so it looks like he is, yeah, he's going to be dropping down a stable. So he's going to be putting on a little bit of pressure to start out this game. Um, and that's just going to allow him to just uh, make HRE a little bit more uncomfortable um, with getting up these walls and also just allow him to control the spots where the relics are a little bit more easily. Indeed. Uh, meanwhile, on the other side, I'm Magic is building that Arkham Chapel with free wheels. Obviously, given the fact that Viper is going for those horsemen, it's going to be difficult to get to those relics as you are going up to Castle Age, because that's what you want to do. As you're going into Castle Age, you are already walking towards those relics, so you can pick them up the moment you hit Castle Age and start going back home. By adding horsemen here, Viper denies that opportunity from Iron Magic, so even if Iron Magic went for knights in Castle Age, he's going to need to wait to move out with those prelates, so... That is definitely going to slow down his collection of relics for Ragnitz Cathedral. So far, it looks like our magic is not going for any kind of military units, so he's just walling himself up. Walls on the front, complete. Walls on the left side, though, might not get completed before that uh, scout kills the villager. Yeah, on the north side as well, there's a horseman about to run into this villager. Uh, Magic's not quite going to be able to get those uh, remaining wall segments down in time. Uh, he might still be able to complete the wall before the villager dies, though. Yep. Um, he's trying to lure the horseman out. Oh, look at that. I am magic. Uh, oh, nope. Nope. not quite a magical defense there. Nope. He tried it and the idea was great. He lures the horseman outside mm -hmm. and then he runs back inside and quickly walls behind him. I think he just misclicked the wall segment because that opening remained there. And I think the other segment was built on the left side. Um, the villager still survives, apparently. Um, this scout is just chilling over here, not really caring about that. But for Viper, of course, every single villager that's able to be picked off is just great. And the fact that he's forcing stuff like defensive towers is just a wonderful scenario for him. Simply because I Am Magic wants to just get to Castle and start collecting relics. Everything else is just a detour for him. Yeah, for sure. Uh, he's going to be killing off that second villager now that's uh, busy walling, so... Um... Pretty good situation for him. Some spearmen are now coming out for magic, so he's going to be able to uh, at least defend from the couple of horsemen that did get into his base. And uh, maybe he can escort a villager up to the, the north wall to close that uh, once he has a couple more spearmen as well. 
Exactly. But at this point, what Viper accomplished was basically slow down I'm Magic's Castle Age timing to his own pace. And it looks like the Villager is moving out, but there is no Spearman Escort up until now. So I'm Magic is going to have to move out there to finish those balls. And if you look at Viper, he's going up with... Apparently, that's the Imperial Academy. So the it's... Song gonna, Dynasty, yeah. Yep, it's Song first. I was just about to say that with the amount of damage that he caused, he could have considered just waiting a little bit more going Castle and trying to pick up those relics himself because... I magic was slowed down so much that Viper would have a comparable castle age timing and Viper has the map control so he could easily pick up 3-4 relics with a fast castle here. Instead, he decides to go for a Song Dynasty here. Yeah, I think that's a reasonable decision though. It is going to get him get him uh, some faster villager production so he is going to start pulling ahead in that villager count. Um, and so, yeah, it should be fine for him. It's not going to affect his macro to age up either. It's just going to slow it down a little bit as they do cost the same resources. Those horsemen are still around. They will be annoying, but they won't be able to deal that much damage, all of them being heavily damaged at this point. Uh, Viper, as he said, going into Song Dynasty. Uh, looking at his base, he's also mining stone and supervising that the mining camp, so he's going to be playing with two Thousanders at minimum. Whereas on the other side, if you look at the resource bank for Iab Magic, he's getting close to Castle Age, but he definitely had to take a long detour here cleaning up all those uh, horsemen inside his eco. Lost a couple of villagers as well, so we already have a 26 to 30 villager situation between the two players in the favor of Viper. Yeah, for sure, but uh, I guess you, as you've already mentioned, uh, Viper delaying his age up here is definitely going to give Magic the opportunity uh, to get some of these relics, especially since he has Spearmen out to counter the horsemen. He can escort some of those prelates maybe to some of those more dangerous relics near Viper's base. Uh, and as long as he can secure two or three relics, he should be in an okay position, even despite uh, a large villager deficit. Uh, at least for a short while. Is it possible that Viper's scout on the left side is trapped within a vole? I'm thinking about uh, that. Like... Yeah, possibly. It actually seems very likely, since it stopped <laughs> attacking that vill, and uh, he didn't move it at all well, the entire time. It happened. Spearman is going to retaliate for the lost comrades before. There's the Regnitz Cathedral coming in. Viper is going to see that, and he even throws a torch at it. He's just like, nope. But of course, the Regnitz Cathedral won't really care about that. Meanwhile, for Viper, second town center coming in. Looking at his resource bank, though, I mean, he's not far away from Castle Age either. So, as you said, Song Dynasty is one thing, but being able to reach Castle Age here at a comparable time to the HRE player is the real jackpot. Yeah, that's true. He'll be able to possibly even hit Castle Age before uh, Magic if he gets that down in the next 30 seconds or so uh, with that increased build time. So uh, yeah, looking pretty good for Viper with a Villager lead and going to be Castle Age uh, around the same time as his opponent and then going to be able to start contesting those relics. Now here's the problem for Viper. Despite the fact that he had the Horsemen out there, those are all gone because those were all trapped within the base of I Am Magic. So he had the horseman for map control, now he doesn't have them, so I imagine can just walk out and start picking up the relics over here. He's going to play this one safe though, he's going to help out with Spearman, but technically nothing prevents him from going out and picking up those relics because Viper has no army on the battlefield. Viper aging up with the clock tower, now supervising the stable, so it's likely we're going to see some sort of cavalry hit the field here very soon. Yeah, he doesn't really have a lot of resources to train a lot of cavalry though. He's, uh, pretty much out of resources. He spent all of them um, very well. Uh, but yeah, that's going to make it difficult for him to uh, to contest these relics. But as you mentioned earlier in the game, the relics have spawned pretty close to uh, Viper's base. So if Magic wants to get more than one, it's going to be... Uh, it's going to require some risk. And you see, Viper's rally point on the stable was set to the furthest away relic. So he knows exactly that that's probably a place where I'm Magic is going to go early. That's going to be at least one relic for Magic. In order to have the advantage over the Chinese player, you need two in the Ragnitz Cathedral because that's going to give you 600 gold per minute over 400 from the Chinese in monasteries. And as things stand, that likely is going to be the scenario because we only have a handful of spearmen out here with not even the hardened upgrade on them. And despite the fact that now they can brace thanks to the January patch, they will still struggle against those Castle Age Lancers. It's going to be difficult for I'm Magic to secure more than one relic here at this point, and obviously that's going to slow down his fast Imperial as well. Yeah, he's he's got a Prelate here on the south of his base that's uh, potentially going to run into this Knight, sadly. Uh, that's going to be close, yep. He does find the Prelate. 
And uh, that guy will be going down. He was maybe going on a long journey to walk around the edge of the map to grab one of the relics on the other side, but uh, nicely intercepted by Viper there. Indeed. Viper already going up with the monastery, and he's even supervising that. I love that. This way he can get a monk out really fast, and he's already walking towards those relics. Num some knights hit the field as well for I am magic, but I am magic is going to have to intercept those monks himself, trying to buy himself some time to grab at least one more relic. But really, he needs two more, so keeping I am magic on two relics is already an accomplishment for Viper. Keeping him on one would be spectacular. Yep, so far so good for him. Um, but there are three knights out here now. There is a prelate on the way. Two more knights reinforcing as well. So uh, it's looking like magic might actually be able to grab uh, this relic in the middle. Um, but Viper is supervising that stable. So maybe he can get out enough to chase down that, that prelate. It is pretty slow. So um, we'll see. Viper loses the monk over here, loses in the one knight as well. He gets away with the other two damaged knights, and as things stand, the prelate is walking back home. There's one knight that could potentially intercept it on the way back home, but I think for magic, the most important thing is that that relic gets closer to his base than it is to Viper's one, because that's the biggest problem. That relic was so close to Viper's side, and then you could think about sneaking up a prelate to the north to grab that relic. Viper will likely intercept this uh, prelate here, but... Ultimately, the relic will probably find its way back into the base fire magic. Magic pops a conversion attempt. A Viper with the animation cancel will get the monk killed, though. So you're going to need a new one to pick that relic up here for I am magic. Yep, there's already one on the way, though. He's about to get through the gate. So that relic is as good as magic's. Meanwhile, magic coming in from the south here. And Viper doesn't have a ton of forces. As you said, he's supervising that stable. But as we discussed before, he's... Spending a ton of resources here, 2,000 or Song Dynasty Boom is a lot, whereas the opponent, I Am Magic, is just making villagers and knights, and now you're going to see I Am Magic coming in to retaliate. Viper did not expect this one to happen. Villagers getting slaughtered on the berries, the farmers have to abandon their farms, and this will force Viper to defend, allowing I Am Magic to start picking up relics. The Song Dynasty obviously gave an advantage in the economy to Viper, but it also meant that he's spending way more resources on eco compared to his opponent, so... I'm Magic can just focus on army, and at this point, I think I'm Magic is happy to trade these knights even if needed. Just take down a couple more vills. Still, Viper has an 18 villagers lead, but of course, with all that distraction cause, that's gonna be at least two relics, potentially three, for I am Magic now in. So the Dragonese Cathedral will compensate quite a bit, and you got some knights moving in from the north as well. Could hit the farmers on the right side. Viper is gonna have a lot of inefficiency on that economy with all those knights coming in to raid. Yep, definitely could be a good raid here. There's also four knights chasing five in the middle of the map. If Viper gets distracted by this raid, he could potentially uh, lose those knights as there's a bunch of reinforcements that could flank it as well. And um, Yeah, at the moment, it's looking to be a pretty even game overall. Uh, still two relics under uh, contention. No uh, prelates on the way to pick those up just yet. Um, but uh, yeah, villager, or villager leads still heavily... Uh, in favor of Viper, up 22 vils. Um, the Regnet's helping out a little bit, but... Uh, yeah, still has to try and contest those relics. Actually, if you look at... Um, if you look at Magic's vision, he might not be aware of one of the two relics on the bottom. He's aware of, of one by the hunt, for sure, but the the one near the, the two stone mines and the, the wood line, it looks like he hasn't scouted that. Viper picking up one relic from the south over here. And there was one relic up north that I actually didn't see where it went. Uh, Viper has it garrisoned, so Viper is going to be on free here at this point. Because, as you said, I Magic doesn't see the final relic here. Uh, and there is just no product moving out here. I think it uh, seems that Magic is going to just be happy with two relics at this point. Maybe he thinks that Viper already picked it up. But not necessarily ideal, because he definitely had his window to collect that third relic out there. Now he's trying to bash his way into Viper's base. As you said, the eco difference is quite noticeable. 45 to 71 is the villager count. Of course, that's not something that the HR necessarily have to be worried about, because they have the Palace of Schwabia to compensate for that. On the other hand, mm -hmm. when you're this heavy on the army department, going for triple barracks, double stables, you have to consider that that Imperial Age is going to be just a distant dream for the time being for uh, I'm magic. Yeah, you say that, but if you 
look right. at his resources. He's up to 1,800 gold and 1,200 food, so it looks like he is actually trying to save for that uh, that Palace of Swabia. Um, no longer training any units, so um, that is probably going to be the case for him. And um, yeah, falling behind in the Knight Department uh, as a result. Yeah, it looks like he cancelled a bunch of units because a couple of seconds ago I looked at his eco and it was like 200 food, 200 gold. For him it makes a lot of sense to get that Palace of Swabia going because he's now realizing that Viper's got the advantage in the villager department and it's starting to show on the battlefield because viper is coming in with more and more lancers and for i am magic he believes that the fight for relics is over so there is not really any point of making more knights for him for now at least despite the fact that there is still one relic that's completely uncontested there actually viper hasn't scouted that relic either so viper probably thinks there's three relics in that regnets so neither oh. of them are aware of that last one there that's nasty, indeed. I am Magic has no idea, Viper has got no idea. And it's just so weird because um, this is just basically the anticipation that your opponent is an elite player and things like this just never happened, right? You just anticipate that your opponent is a very good player, so if I have two relics, he probably has three because I don't see the last one. But the reality is that neither of these players noticed it and neither of the players believe that the opponent didn't notice it. Yep. Exactly. So, in the end, that's probably lucky for Viper. He's not going to grab that relic himself, but there's uh, no third relic in this Ragnet, so uh, he doesn't know it, but we know it's good for him. And now here's the deal. I Am Magic already has invested a lot into his army, so he's not going to stop now. He's going to start adding Eco behind us, and we're seeing Lanskneck hit the field. Now, these bad boys are very fragile, but they have an area of melee damage. And especially if Viper is thinking about adding Spearmen against the Knights, they could be great. And the Imperial Age Power Spike with Elite Knights and potentially Elite Lansknechte, that could be a massive, massive hike for uh, I Am Magic over here. Yeah, this could this could potentially be quite strong. Um, as you said, like the Lansknecht is absolutely a devastating unit against other melee units. And uh, Viper has no archery ranges or anything. He's completely investing into, into Spearmen and Knights for the moment. Um... And yeah, that makes the Lance Connect almost the perfect unit in this situation. Exactly. Viper doesn't seem to know that the Lance Connect are coming in. Uh, now he sees them, so he's going to have to make a reaction. And with the Chinese, you can have fast reactions, but he's very far from even dropping one archer range. The good news for him is that I Magic doesn't have a huge army over here, although it looks like he isn't messing around. He wants to dive in, and the Lance Connect, having the area damage, they're also exceptionally good when it comes to slaughtering villagers in big clusters. Nice little tight choke point, also will have the lunch neck tech quite a lot over here. But the numbers are way better for Vipers, so you gotta wonder if this is a premature fight here for I'm Magic, especially with the Town Center fire, just massacring all the lunch neck tech. Yeah, it seems like Viper just had too much stuff there, a little bit uh, premature from, from Magic to be diving in there, uh, before he was able to get any upgrades or anything like that. Um, maybe he felt like his, maybe he overestimated the power of his Lanch Connect in that situation, and, uh, yeah, Viper looking to be in a good spot. He's followed him up to the next age, he's hunting down, uh, the retreating units, and, um, yeah, I mean, H HRE is definitely, uh, good at getting to the late game, but, um, once China gets to the late game, they've got access to so many, uh, upgrades and bonuses with their additional dynasties, the better bombards, um, Things like Fire Lancers just harass on the side. Like Late game is pretty scary for China here, although Viper just lost all of his knights. Yeah, that's a little sloppy out of it. That's what the Lunsnake they can do, but you need something in front of those because these guys are super fragile. So you need mm -hmm. either Spearmen in front to tank up the charges of the knights. You need uh, potentially some knights of your own. That's probably the better choice because at this point, Viper is going for Palace Guards. So that's probably going to be matched up with Nest of Bees. That's the usual composition of the Chinese if they are not going for the Fire Lancer play, which it seems like it's Viper um, not going to do for the time being. It's just going to be Palace Guards. He's also grabbing Kiri's Daxels, also going for Siege Works. So waiting for those upgrades to come in before even getting some Siege Engines on the field. That clock tower is also being supervised, so he's going to be able to get some nest of bees or bombards up very soon. Yeah, and that could potentially be very scary. Uh, by the way, Magic has uh, now scouted that relic. Uh, there's no prelate on the way yet, but uh, it might ju be just a matter of time uh, before he notices that on the minimap and sends another prelate out there to grab that. Exactly. Viper is still unaware of that. 
So there is a window to grab it, and that extra 300 gold per minute could be a difference maker here. Currently, it's 104 wills for Viper, 93 for I Am Magic. But I Am Magic already investing a lot into his army, and let's not underestimate the Lance that because just one bad fight for Viper and everything is going to fall apart. Melee units will get eaten alive by all those units out there. Viper adding more barracks, so looks like he's confident with the Palace Guard play. If he has something behind that, any kind of firepower, talk about hand cannons, talk about archers, nest of bees in particular, then it's going to be able to defeat the Lansknecht there, but without that, that's not an option. Yeah, he is starting to train nest of bees now, so he will have that uh, pretty soon. He is supervising that, so he can train those pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, he should be okay to defend this. Uh, now starting to build university, starting to get more of those upgrades going. And uh, on the other side, Magic now has that Prelate almost to that uh, Relic, so he's definitely noticed. Viper having one villager on that good big gold mine down south is going to get killed. We'll also spot the Knights coming in for counterattack, though, so he will be able to react. Speaking of which, on the left side, Viper got a detachment of Knights trying to break into the opponent's base. Let's see how those Lunsnack they fare against them. They're now elite, and uh, well... That's what you get against the Lansknechte. Basically an even trade here, because even though the Knights took a lot of damage here from the arrow damages, the Lansknechte are so fragile that by themselves they will get picked apart by the Heavy Cavalry. Yeah, at the same time though, I think those units were a lot cheaper uh, than those Knights, so... Yeah, maybe roughly equal trade, maybe slightly in favor of magic, but nothing too big. Indeed, now the knights do get cleaned up over here. A combination of knights and lunchnecht is uh, pretty scary to go for. Uh, so I think that's what could be the concerning thing for Viper. But Viper, now with the lead palace guards, uh, also having the extra HP on them, will have the nest of bees rolling up too. The clock tower constantly being supervised will mean that he's going to be able to reinforce the battlefield with siege weapons very, very consistently. And now the question becomes, how does magic counter all those nest of bees? Because his best choice is probably Colverins. But even Colburns will struggle quite badly against the Chinese Bombards. A volley comes out from that nest of bees. And if a second volley comes out here, that could be a massacre. Those infantry units for Iron Magic are just so fragile here. Knights trying to jump on the siege weapons. Viper pulling wheels to repair. And it looks like a massive win for Viper. His units survive a lot longer in these battles. And that helps so much for him right now. Yeah, for sure. That was a huge fight for him. Killing most of uh, Magic's army there. Um, and getting the keep up behind this, he can maybe start grabbing that sacred site, start creeping forward on the map. He's starting to uh, stonewall the sides of his base just to prevent any of those uh, raids from getting through. Um, looking really solid uh, for Viper at this point. He's also got the tech for, um, or he's getting all the techs for his siege weapons. His nest of bees are now 25% cheaper, so 225 wood, 225 gold, down from 300 and 300, as well as researching those bombard upgrades. So. Uh, yeah, looking to put him in a pretty good spot pretty soon. Um, but a magic as HRE, he does have access to those culverins, and uh, with some vills to repair, he could be able to repel some of this siege. Exactly. Whenever you're using culverins, especially in this scenario, you only need some repair villagers nearby because they're very expensive and they do have a lot of firepower. But you need to make sure that they won't get sniped down by the bombards of the opponent, by spring oats from the opponent. And that's exactly what we're going to see here. Culverins moving in for I Am Magic. He's also moving uh, Prelate all the way up north, so makes me wonder if he wants to start capping those sacred sites. He's been placing towers all around as well, so he could start creeping towards those sacred sites and get an even better gold income just by capping two out of the three. Viper has control over one of those. That's almost impossible to be taken right now by I Am Magic. Viper with 180 population, 51 army. 180 population as well for I Am Magic, but with 60 army. Yeah, it looks like for now players are just uh, positioning. Looks like these palace guards are going to get uh, get caught out, but uh, not before killing one villager, which costs 12 food and gets replaced in 4 seconds by the palace of Swabia, so not, not a big deal. Um, and this keep only being constructed with one vill on the south, and these lanch connect are going to get there in time to deny it. A little bit greedy there uh, from Viper. Uh, that villager is going to go down, and that keep is uh, potentially going to just die. And... 
We always talk about Fire Lancers being a very dangerous unit as they run into big clusters of villagers to kill them, but Lancenek they can do something very similar. That raid just evaporated 15 villagers from Viper there in a matter of seconds. You see another palace guards are coming in. Love the move from Iron Magic because the Lancenek they are also kind of fast moving here. So with the Knight and Lancenek that you can flank on the left side, and that means that Viper isn't able to reinforce you with the Nest of Bees. So you can just take fights against the Palace Guards. And as I said, those Lansnack that will perform really well against massed melee units. Nest of Bees now opening up on the Lansnack there though. And that could be a disaster. Iron Magic is not watching. And those fragile infantry units of his will just get picked apart by two Nest of Bees here. Everything getting slaughtered the moment the siege appears on the battlefield. Yeah, the keep does go down, but that was definitely a worthwhile trade for Viper as just thousands of resources and units going down there to a couple volleys of those nest of bees. And now on the front, there's some bombards that was starting to hit away at this keep. There is a culverin nearby to potentially defend, but these are clock tower bombards with the additional HP, and they're going to be pretty difficult to snipe. Some elite knights are now on the field as well, as the palace guards are crawling up for Viper on the left side. Viper still has a fairly significant number of units on the battlefield 60 army whereas it's only 21 for iron magic so really his entire army was in that group of landsknecht that, that just got slaughtered by the nest of bees um didn't see if the viper's keep had boiling oil but it's also possible that part of the reason why they were heavily damaged was boiling oil but nope viper doesn't have it so it was only the nest of bees also seeing some archer ranges from viper makes me wonder if you're going to see some jugenu potentially or uh honestly now that he's going Hankaneers, if he has a ton of resources, Ming Dynasty could be an option and go Grenadiers. His opponent is basically exclusively infantry. Grenadiers would be pretty strong against the um, the defenses that uh, Magic has, but I think that uh, he would probably just prefer the move movement speed, um, just to make sure that his uh, his siege can always run away from these knights and his men at arms can be even faster than they already are. Um, but uh, yeah, some knights going to be getting into the base, it looks like. Um, Magic's fed up with fighting in the middle. He's just going to go for some harassment. Uh, but Viper's got some spearmen popping out. He should be totally fine there. Yeah, he's likely going to be fine here. He's going to lose some villagers. But of course, keep in mind, some villas can also jump into the villages here. Which means that it is much more difficult for those knights to do a lot of raiding damage. And you see, the ones on the north are barely inflicting any casualties. And the ones on the south will take down a couple. But behind this one, Viper is pushing up the left side, cutting off Iron Magic from that gold mine. As you said, replacing those HRE villagers is rather easy, but still, you don't want to lose them in groups of 20. Iron Magic having his entire army cleaned up on the north, Viper is constantly 200 population. Down south, it's 146 right now for Iron Magic. He's struggling with population pretty mightily, and it's just gonna get worse and worse, as these villagers are also getting slain on the left side. Yeah, and um, Viper is doing a good job of denying this gold. Um, but yeah, as you said, he'll be able to replace those vills pretty quickly with the Palace of Swabia. And he still has a full 8,000 gold mine uh, in his base, so he'll be able to uh, gather some gold pretty easily there. Viper now pushing up the middle here. He's also got some spring golds going here with the extra range. That's what he's trying to use to snap down. The Colbrains, Colbrains crawling closer though, getting some nice shots in, taking down the Springles here. But of course, Clock Tower Bombards and Springles together might be able to beat Colbrains, and that's exactly what we're seeing. One Colbrain goes down. Now though, I am Magic's Force, they're overrunning Viper Siege. Viper is inside the base of Magic here with some Palace Guards, but in the middle, I am Magic's Forces seem to be a lot more powerful. Handkinders hitting the field here could help a lot for Viper to repel this aggression. Yeah, both the Clock Tower Bombards are going to go down. That's a lot of uh, the pressure that... Um, uh, it's a large part of the pressure Viper was putting on, so he's going to have to uh, try and replace those, um, as he already has two of them in queue. And uh, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, looking to be pretty even, probably, for both players, as Viper is still in the base uh, for Magic. He is still killing villagers, but that... Uh, actually, holy cow, I didn't even notice how many villagers... Uh, Magic must have lost. He's not, somehow down to 60 villagers, even despite the Palace of Swabia. Yeah, it seems like the Palace of Swabia was inactive for a long time. Now he's adding some more villas, but he lost a solid 20 on the left side. And, of course, those Palace Guards running in here, you see empty farms and empty wood line. That has to be at least, like, 25, 30 killed over there, and it is fast to replenish villagers the Palace of Swabia, but unless 
uh, you are able to keep your eco alive, you're still going to lose a dozens of villagers. And currently, our magic is losing villagers faster than he can replenish them with the pass of Shrabio, which is just unbelievable. He's losing one villager at least every five seconds here. Yeah, and he's also like not able to collect any gold. It looks like he doesn't have any bills in that gold mine in his base because he's just so busy trying to defend and replace his farm villagers and stuff. And he's trying to make these really expensive gold units like Knights and Siege and uh, Lanch Connect. And yeah, things are looking really good for Viper now at 200 population, double that of I Am Magic. So uh, looking to be actually a decisive lead for, for Viper at this point. It is a decisive lead indeed because now he's pushing up the middle. So as I Am Magic was distracted cleaning up all that aggression inside his base, now Viper is pushing the middle. There are some Mangonels on the battlefield to try and deal with the infantry flood of the Viper. But down south, Viper already has the Sacred Site under his control as well. Has some castles solidifying his grip over the map. And we're just looking into 74 army versus 47. A quite significant lead for Viper and he also has some hand cannoneers which will perform really effectively when you have a meat shield of spearmen and palace guards in front of them. Yeah, especially with that pyrotechnics upgrade that uh, China have for uh, an extra 20% range on all gunpowder units, uh, those uh, hand cannoneers become even scarier. Look at the bombard positioning for Viper. I'm just noticing this. I didn't even see that. That keep was destroyed from this elevated position by the bombards. I was like, who is shooting at that keep? And the answer is, blocked our bombards from the top of Viper's Hill. Just smashed that keep in the face. And they also destroyed the gold mining operation out there. I imagine still 114 population. As you said, you can replenish your villagers in the Palace of Shrabia. But that's still going to take some time. And... I don't think that you have time over here, although three Mangonels here could do a ton I mean, of damage on Viper's forces, and Viper, mismicering his army here for a brief moment, could have lost a significant amount of units over here. Yeah, I mean, Magic's not even paying attention to his Palace of Swabi as it's currently idle, but yeah, we do have a fight going on. The Mangonels getting good hits on the hand cannons, but the hand cannons can equally uh, return fire and take those out along with the Bombard in the back, and there's just so much stuff here for Viper with two more Bombards coming in the back of this fight, and uh, it's looking like this is probably going to be uh, the game deciding fight right here. Indeed, I am Magic. He's not going to be able to replay his army. Viper could lose whatever he wants here because Viper's got the resources to rebuild his forces, floating a thousand of each resource, even more than that from gold, three thousand. Whereas for I am Magic, his resource banks are empty. As you said, there is no gold income for him, despite the fact that this gold mine is still accessible on top of the hill for him. He lost way too many villagers and currently is at 75 population. He just doesn't have the economy to replenish his forces anymore. And his army is slowly going to get uh, destroyed by Viper's army here. Yep, these last handfuls of Lanch Connect are really Magic's last hope. He's going in, but the nest of bees in the back just doing so much damage. And yeah, I am Magic's going to tap out. That's going to be Viper's victory 2 0, heading on to the semifinals. Dominant performance out there. Really, really effective and dominant performance by Viper. It came down to the fact that uh, he was able to take some really good fights in that mid-game area. See, um, the villager count was pretty much even mid-game, but then suddenly started...